Port forwarding allows users to forward traffic for a device from one port to another. Normally, the built-in firewall blocks incoming traffic from the internet. Port forwarding allows internet users to access any server you are running on your computer, such as a web, FTP, or email server. Keep in mind that a public IP address is needed from your internet service provider for this to work. If you're still not clear on what port forwarding is, then let us put it another way. Imagine you're in front of a brick wall that has a magic door. Use the right key or port, and it opens to the device you need to access. The way this works in the real world is that the firewall translates the WAN IP you enter along with the port number into the correct route to the device on your LAN. In our example, we have one of our IP switches connected to the LAN of our Insego FX2000E. We can see it here under the client list of the Insego webpage. If we click on this section, we can then confirm the IP address of our IP switch. Now that I've confirmed the local IP address, I'll make sure I can reach the login page for the switch. If this does not work for you, you might have the wrong port number. In our case, since this is an ATTP page, it is using port 80. Going back to the Insego webpage, we can start the configuration of the port forwarding. Start at the settings page and click on advanced. Confirm you want to proceed by clicking continue. Next, click on the port forwarding tab. Once at this page, we'll need to confirm the port forwarding is enabled. If not, simply click here to toggle it on. Scroll down past the preset applications and you can set a custom application rule. This is what we're going to use. Click add custom application and new settings will appear. Give the custom rule a unique name. We're going to use the name of the switch. I'll fill in the local IP address of the switch next. Port type can be set to a range or in our case, translate. This is because our switch only uses port 80 for access. Port numbers is where we will enter an external port for remote access, followed by the internal port in which our device listens at. I'm using port 8080 for the external port, and since my device uses port 80, this will be the internal port. Lastly, we can adjust the protocol as needed. Clicks, save changes when your configuration is complete. After a moment, you should see a confirmation message at the top of the page. Now that this is done, I'm going to confirm the WAN IP address as this is what I'll use for remote access to my switch. I'm using a Verizon static IP address. I'll enter this address in my browser along with the port 8080 I set in my forwarding rule. As you'll see, this will now load the same login page I was accessing locally. There cannot be any port conflicts, which is why we had to forward the common port 80 to something different. Keep this in mind when doing your own configuration. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.